I can let other people do some things too. I can let some other people take some responsibility, and so I just left. And Greg and the band and Amanda did a great job up here with the music, and, and Reggie taught a couple messages, and most of you stayed awake. And it was, it was, a, it was a great couple of weeks, a uh, great couple of Sundays. And, and I had a great week in Florida. I had a really encouraging time with my family. And I tell you what, I felt free. I had released responsibility, and I felt free. Not that you're my ball and chain, but that I just personally felt a sense of freedom. You know what I mean? And I learned this principle, if I hadn't totally known it before, but it goes like this. In order for me to feel free, my freedom depends on my ability to rely on others. We usually think my freedom depends on my ability to be my own person, to stand independently. But no, my real freedom to do what, what fills my heart with joy, my freedom depends on my ability to rely on others. And that's what the Sabbath thing is really all about. My freedom depends on my ability to take what's in my hands and hand it over to someone else and say, take care of it for me. I trust you. And that's what God wants to do for you. God wants to be the person on your team who takes the responsibilities and says, you take a day off. Let me worry about it. Let me worry about changing your boss's heart. Let me worry about these things. You just take a break. Let me spend this day worrying. See, that's what the Sabbath is about. It's about releasing something so that we can be free to rely on someone else. It's an amazingly simple principle. And so I'm going to give you just a couple practical things to take it home. I'll be honest with you, this whole Sabbath thing is very difficult for me. Number one, because I work on Sunday, right? So I spend a good portion of my week pointing towards Sunday, and then I get here on Sunday, and then, then I've got a responsibility to teach and, and to do some of these things. And, and so there's this sense where I find all kinds of excuses in the Bible to not uphold this principle. In fact, I can tell you all the reasons why pastors don't need to uphold the Sabbath. Because, you know, in the Old Testament, the Levites, they worked on the Sabbath day. They worked every single day. That's just what they did. That was their job. And so if, if pastors and stuff are modern day you know, Old Testament priests, and, you, know, you know, whatever. I've got all kinds of rational arguments. And I've got all kinds of emotional arguments. You know, every single week, I've got seven days to put together some type of message that is both going to teach and entertain. And if I take a day off, I only have six days. It's not like Sunday then moves on a day later because I took Monday off or something like that. It's, it, it, I still have fewer days, and so if I take a day off, I have less time to do the amount of work that I feel like I need to do. And I'm not different from you. You've got jobs. You've got responsibilities. You've got things around your house that you've got to get done. And so I'm not telling you any information that's new to me. We all have our excuses of if I take this time off, then I won't have enough enough time left over to do the things that I have to do, right? That I got to get done. Well, that's because we have to shift our heart perspective, dig a little deeper and say, it's about the fact that I'm relying on myself. Dig that out. Rely on God. And this is what he says it works like. So here's a couple practical things. I actually only have one blank here for you at the very end. But I would say this, over each arena of my life, make this a personal statement for you. Over each arena of my life, I will declare a Sabbath and release control of that portion. You're going to declare a portion of your avenues of life as a Sabbath. So for example, over your week, you're going to declare a portion of your week as a Sabbath. For me, I do basically noon on Sunday to noon on Monday. I take a 24-hour Sabbath thing, and uh, I would like for it, I think it works best or better if I could somehow convince myself to make that all in one day, but I'm still working through my neurosis, and so, you know, you can, you can watch me on that one, but I'm letting you know that from 12 or ish on Sunday, 12 to 1 on Sunday to 12 to 1 on Monday, I take a 24-hour don't-call-me sort of thing. 
Um, and sometimes if you call me, I might answer. But you should say, why are you answering the phone? Because you're supposed to be, you know, taking your Sabbath. Stuff like that. But, so that's sort of the way I do it. But that means in your week, you've got to take one portion, set it aside, and say, that belongs to God, not me. Follow me? There are other avenues of your life where the same thing applies. Although the command doesn't explicitly say this, I think our own tendency towards self-reliance is also alleviated and, and helped through the principle of percentage-based giving. I've talked about the tithe principle before and how God says, you know what, take the first 10% of everything that I bless you with and give that right on back to me. It's exactly the same principle of saying, here's all that I have. I can't do all that I need to do if I take some away. Doesn't matter. God says, this is the way it works. You don't need to rely on yourself. You don't need to rely on this income because I'm the one who blesses you. And so you can make this sacrifice. God says, go ahead, carve this out, set it aside, do that thing. That's a Sabbath for your money. It's a Sabbath for your financials. You might have a relationship that you need to say, okay, there's a portion of this relationship that I need to just put on Sabbath, that I need to say, okay, God, this thing belongs to you. I'm not going to try to change this person in this way anymore. I'm just going to give that over to you and say, God, you need to work on this person. I don't know what it might be for you, but I would say there's one final thing that every one of us has to address today. And that's that there's an aspect of your spiritual life that you've been trying to do on your own. There's an aspect of your spiritual life that you feel perfectionistic about. I need to pray a certain number of times a day. I need to read my Bible a certain amount every day. I need to go to church. I need to do whatever these things. And you feel guilty. You feel legalistic. You feel like a slave in some of these areas. And I, wanted to, I want to tell you today, not that those things are wrong, those things are bad, but I want to tell you today that you need to hand your spiritual life over to God himself and say, you are the one in charge of my growth, my health, my life. Say, God, my body, everything about me, a portion of that can be a Sabbath, but my soul has got to be completely yours. Give it totally to God. Some of you here this morning may never have done that. And so I ask you right now to say, God, am I trying to do this spiritual maturity thing on my own? Or have I given my heart to you? In fact, I want you to do that right now. That little card that we passed out in your bulletin there has a little check mark right on the side, check box right on the side where you could say that you made a decision today. And if you made some kind of decision to give your life to Jesus, to follow him, there's a little checkbox there. You can just put a check mark in there. But I want to give you an opportunity right now to spend some time